Hello there guys, welcome back to another C Sharp tutorial. In this video we are gonna see how we can connect our application to a database and we will see how Visual Studio create classes to simplify things for us. So let's have a look at this chart. Your information is stored in the database. First thing that's gonna happen, uh, there is something called a data adapter or an adapter and the adapter's job is to load the information from your database and put that data or information in a buffer. The buffer is called a data set and that buffer can represent one table or more. Okay, now after the information gets loaded here, something else is being used which is called the binding source and the binding source job is to link one of your table with the user interface. So, data get loaded from here using the adapter to be placed in the data table which uh, reside in the, inside the data set and that get uh, connected to user interface using the binding source. Easy, right? And when you do some changes here, the changes get reflected uh, on the data uh, ta uh, on the data table in the data set and then the adapter will transfer these changes into the database. Okay, so now let's uh, see if that's the case or how uh, uh, you know how this uh, works in Visual Studio. So I'm gonna start a new project. There's gonna be a new project here. It's gonna be a Windows Forms application. I'm gonna hit OK. No problem there. I will select uh, the, from the solution. I will select add. Where is that? Add a new item. It's gonna be data. It's gonna be uh, sorry. Mm. Service-based database. Sorry. Yeah. There's gonna be testing DB. Okay. This is the name of the database. I'm gonna select add. And I'm going to double click that. I will need to create a table quickly. So create a new table. Uh, there's going to be what? There's going to be people. Okay. Uh, there's going to be what? There's going to be, uh, let me use that, person ID. Uh, there's going to be person name. And there's going to be person age. There's going to be an varchar. 50 there's going to be integer and I don't want this to be null I will select uh, ask it to update the, the database update that database and everything should be fine right click here and show table data and there's going to be first uh, Linda uh, okay 2 uh, Joey uh, 22 uh, okay Ross uh, 30 um, Chandler okay friends okay so now uh, we have this information few guys from France uh, maybe change that to uh, Monica yeah so all friends okay so now I'm gonna close this I close this and we have our form now let's go back to our solution so here you can see the database next we need to ask uh, our Visual Studio to help us connect to the database we added the database but there is no way our application can communicate with it right now so what are we gonna do uh, go to view and uh, go to other windows and make sure to select data sources so that this uh, thing appears and this allows you to connect to databases. So I'm going to select add a new data source. It's going to be a database because you could connect to a service or other things, but basically we need to connect to a database. Select next. Uh, which which kind of model do you want to use? We are going to use a data set. It's the only one. I'm going to select next, and it detected our database. Okay, it it wants to create, uh, you know, uh, a connection to this one next and then it's going to ask us about connection string and the connection string is uh, some text information that tells your application where to find the database uh, what's the username password uh, sometimes specify the behavior of the connection with the database etc 
So uh, we're going to say next, and it's going to display this thing here, which uh, helps you specify which information to include in your data set. So I'm going to ask it to include the people table. This is the name of the data set here, and I'm going to say finish. And when this thing appears, uh, I'm going to just drag the people table and drop it here. And now I'm going to dock this. Okay, and I will run the application. Let's hope it works. And you see our information in the form, and we can change this. Thir uh, oh, sorry, 29, 29. Okay, and I'm gonna save this. Okay, I save that. Close. Okay, and I'm gonna run this again. You see, okay, so the information wasn't saved, right? 20, 20, 20, and I'm gonna save that. Close. Let me see if. Okay, I think I figured what the problem is. It, it is working, but uh, let me show you this. Uh, what is that? Up at Folder and File Explorer. I'm gonna go to bin debug, and I'm gonna run this one. I will run this one. Oops. Okay. So there's going to be 20, 20, 20. And I will save here. Close. And double click that. And you can see the values here are correct. Uh, we will cover later on why the values here are being saved and in the previous, uh, when, when you run Visual Studio, it doesn't. Uh, simply because every time you build the application, when you press run, your application get built again. And what happens is that Visual Studio will copy the empty or the old database file and overwrite your changes. Okay, so you don't see the values uh, because uh, everything get built from the beginning. This is why. Okay, so let's have a look at what happened when we drag and drop things here. First, the wizard added a few things. Uh, you can see here. This is what testing DB data set. Okay. Not only that, it actually, um, if you have a look here, you will find that it added this thing here, which is a data grid view, uh, added a binding navigator, and added few controls of down here. So let's investigate these things one at a time. So this is the database that we created. And if we have a look at the word file, this is the database. What also do we see? We see something called people table adapter. Okay. And if we go back to our word file, this is the adapter. Okay. Uh, in this case, from its name, it is used to fill the people table with information. Okay. There's something else that's called table adapter manager. You don't have to worry about that. But anyway, so. Uh, this is the people table adapter. Uh, what do we have? We have testing DB data set. And we said that a data set here uh, could contain one or more tables. Right? So uh, how can we see the information inside the data set? Well, actually, this is here testing DB data set. Just double click that and you will see the, the tables in the data set. You have one table called people and here it's also showing the adapter. Okay, let's go back to our form. So now what we have seen so far is the data set and its table, the adapter and database. We need to find also the binding source. So let's go back here. What do you see as well? You will see people binding source. So this binding source tells you that it, it can connect with the people table. And if you go back, go to its properties, you'll find data source testing data, uh, DB data set. So it connects to the data set and in the member, it connects to the people table. Nice, right? And finally, we said that user interface communicates with what? With the binding source. So the user interface here is the data uh, accurate view. Right, and this data grid view. If you go to the uh, data source here, what do you find? You find 
people binding source, which is this one. We just said that uh, this one get connected to the people data table, right? So this one, uh, this control is connected to this control, which in turn connects to this data set, which contains this table. Uh, and this table get filled by the adapter, which is, uh, where's that? Adapter, and the adapter communicates with the database here. Okay? So this is the basic idea. This is what's happening all in the, uh, uh, very quickly without you realizing it's happening. And uh, if we double click this one, you'll find that in the load event, what's happening is that your application is asking the adapter to fill the people table in the data set with data. Okay? Uh, Visual Studio inserted this for you here. Okay? So, uh, what's happening is that your application uh, is communicating with the adapter and the adapter will get the information. You don't have to worry on how it's getting the information, but it will get it and put that into the people data table. And if you look at here, uh, this is the people data adapter. It's asking it to fill the information. And the information that's being uh, retrieved will be placed in what? Into the data set and exactly it's going to be placed in the people table. Very easy, very straightforward. Um, what also do we, uh, do we see? We see that there's something called here people binding navigator save item click. And this event uh, get it triggered when you press the save button. Okay, so what is happening here? Uh, the table adapter manager is being asked to update the information uh, or up, uh, or transfer the updates from the test DB data set into the data uh, uh, into the database. Okay, so we said the adapter will update the database. In this case, the manager uh, knows which adapter to call and how to transfer the changes. So let me see. Uh, where's the manager? This is the manager, right? And you'll see what? You'll see that it knows what, what the people table adapter object is, right? So it will use this one in order to update the information in the in the database, you don't have to worry much about the details. Pretty much everything is uh, everything is being handled by Visual Studio. But right now, you just need to understand these components and how things work. Now, one of the things that you might need to uh, look into is uh, or let us remind ourselves of the previous uh, videos. Previous videos we talked about SQL. You haven't seen any SQL at all, right? But actually it exists. And if you open this one, you will find this file. TSDB dataset designer.cs. And when you click this one, uh, you will find uh, some call code created by uh, the wizard for you, right? So let me see, where can I show you that? Can I show you this in the file or in the designer? Let me see. I think it was here. Uh, let me see. I, I think I need to do a search. Select. Okay, there we go. So I did a search in this file, and in this file, you will find, for example, delete from, check, check this out. This is a delete statement. Delete from blah blah blah. A bit from people where person ID equals. So it's using an SQL st uh, statement in order to perform changes against the database. Here it's doing an insert statement. Here it's doing an update statement to transfer the changes. Uh, okay, and here it's is going a sell is uh, making or doing a select statement. Right, so the SQL that we learned previously is being used here. So when the designer creates this one for you, and when the designer defines the table adapter, what is doing actually it created a complete source code, okay, and used SQL statements to make its changes 
against the database. These SQL statements are being used to load the information from the database and also to update, delete, uh, uh, and uh, insert values into the database. Okay, but uh, Visual Studio tries to hide things from you as much as possible to reduce complexity, but in the end, it it is using SQL. So I've just shown you the SQL statements in the uh, inside the, the the data set. There is another place that you could see them, right? So uh, of course, don't change the code here, otherwise uh, this file co could be corrupted and uh, it won't, it might not work. So let's go back to this one. Now, if you click on here, okay, you will see what full and get data. So this is the full method that is being used to get the information from the database. You'll find something called command text. And here it says select person ID, person name, person age from dbo.people. This is exactly the SQL that we did previously to get information in, uh, when, uh, in the previous videos, right? It is uh, here, right? So we can even change this one if we want to, but I don't want to break things, okay? So uh, I'm just trying to show you uh, uh, how everything in the end translates to SQL and depends on SQL. Okay, let me see if I can show you uh, the updates and deletes. I wonder. Okay, if if you click on on the adapter, not the full and get data. If you cl uh, click on the adapter itself, you will find what there is: insert command, select command, update command, and also delete command. In the update command, if you open that, you will find update. Uh, just put the pointer, you will find update dbo people set blah blah blah. You can see the tooltip gives you a very long SQL, but it is an updated statement. Uh, same goes true, uh, same is true for the select statement. Okay, this is the same select. Uh, the same goes for the insert statement, right? We are, you have seen that before, right? And same is true for the delete statement. So you have seen this as well. Okay, so uh, this is the basic idea. This is what I wanted to show you. Uh, so I hope now you understand what's happening. In the next video, we will uh, try to make uh, you know a better database and uh, uh, start investigating uh, you know how we can build applications uh, that connect to a database using. Uh, the data set model. Okay, uh, that's all for today. Thank you for watching and have a nice day. Bye bye.